um, for the the class she took. So. <laughs> We're going to say cheers. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let Jessica tell a little bit about herself and what she's doing, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello? There you go. Okay, now you got it. Okay, so, um, so my name is Jessica Edwards. I go by Jess or Jessica either one. Um, I started turning in 2014. Um, I learned from my grandpa who lives in Minnesota. He has been a long time woodcraft woodworker. He kind of self-taught. Um, same thing with wood turning and he'd always give out you know the things that he's made for Christmas and everything and uh, one day I asked him if I could if he could teach me and he asked me what I wanted to make and I said I don't know a bowl. He said no we're not starting with a bowl. So we made a candlestick instead and I did three hours with him at his lathe in his shop and I was hooked. And thankfully my husband's super supportive of me in this craft and I went and found a lathe, I found some tools and I started turning and so I was just completely hooked. Um, I've only recently been starting taking classes um, and doing ladies of the lathe classes. I've done a couple small things at Woodcraft. Um, recently I was in Craft Supplies USA doing a week long course with Matt Monaco and Kirk Tahir was his assistant and I learned a lot during that as well. Um, lots of tool techniques and things that maybe I learned previously but then kind of forgot. Um, but today what I'm going to be demoing for everybody here is these gnomes. Uh, they're a relatively simple project. It only takes three tools to make them or how I make them I only use three tools for the entire project. And I'm hoping that we'll have enough time to do one that's this size as well as an ornament. Because the ornaments, you can use something that's this big to make it. So all of your cutoffs, if you're a pen turner or segmented turning, anything like that, if you have small cutoffs like this, you can make a gnome out of all three of these pieces. So, um, and so I never throw away my scraps. You know, this is a piece of ebony and I've, I think I've had it for like four or five years. So we'll see if I can actually make something out of it today. Um, we're going to just jump on the lathe, I guess, right away. This lathe is way too tall for me, so if I have a little challenge, that's why. <laughs> a footstool, yeah. We looked for one, couldn't find one except for the rolling rack, the rolling cart, and I don't want to be moving back and forth while I'm doing that. <laughs> so uh, we'll just do with this. But like, if, if you guys don't know proper lathe height, the best way is to put your arm at like a 90 degree like this, and then measure it from your fingertips down to the floor. And that's where you should be on center with your lathe. So this is a little bit tall, but I might just go up on my tiptoes. But if you didn't know that trick, um, that's just a really good rule of thumb just to check the lathe height in your own shop so that you're not hurting your shoulders, your back, your elbows, anything like that. Everything, you shouldn't be hurting from a full day of turning. Um, so with gnomes, um, you can use three blocks like this. The size doesn't really matter. Um, I've made gnomes from, you know, like the small size that you see here all the way up to something that's maybe 24 inches tall and I've hollowed out the inside and made a cookie jar out of it. Um, so you can make them in a variety of different sizes. Um, I chose these pieces today because I can just put them right into my chuck uh, without having to make a tenon. If you're doing anything larger than this diameter or length, you should make a tenon just so your, your piece of work is secure. Um, but when you choose what you want for the hat, the body, and the nose of the gnome, I always do three different types of wood just so that they're all different. So then no, none of my gnomes are the same. I don't want them to be the exact shape, diameter, size, height. I want them all to be a little bit different. Um, so when choosing, you want your hat to be the biggest element because that's the first thing you're going to turn. And then your body, this, this next one, because the body has to fit underneath and seat underneath the hat. And then the nose is left over. You can make a nose even out of a little piece like this too. So, but we'll probably make a big one out of here. Uh, so I like to start with the, um, the hat first because that determines the size of the rest of the shape or of the gnome, excuse me. So I just have a Nova chuck here, nothing fancy, just seat it in here. And then I always like to have tailstock support 
when I'm working because why not? You don't want it to fly off the lathe. So having tailstock support on here when you're taking off a lot of material is always good. And then tighten it around three times on all three sides. No one got that? Okay, there's only two sides here to tighten, but... <laughs> I'm glad some people are laughing. <laughs> and I don't have this big of a lay that home that I'm using right now, so if it just takes me a minute to get used to it, just sorry. So I mentioned before that I use three tools when I turn this. I use a spindle roughing gouge, a spindle gouge and a parting tool. These are the only tools you really need. So you don't need anything fancy at all for these. And I use the exact same tools for the small ones as well. Okay. So, and then I always, turn the lathe by hand just to make sure that my uh, stock is clearing everything, nothing's hitting, and then always check your height too so that you're at center just slightly below. And then start with the lathe low on speed and then turn it up. And right now I just want to take material off and just round it. Um, I'm not really worried about my cut or the shape just yet. I just want to knock the corners off. So there's multiple ways you can do this with um, your bubble. You can even turn your tool sideways and do some like shearing cuts, some slicing. So once you start to get round, then that's when you're going to start um, taking the shape. And you can cut this down quite a bit with your roughing gouge and then do the final details with your spindle gouge because there's still a lot of material that we need to get removed before we can get to the shape of the hat. I'm going to start shaping the top of the hat and then work my way back. You always want to leave as much material on the headstock end of your lathe as much as possible. You don't want to turn this down really thin and then work out here because you have nothing holding or supporting your work as you go. So here I just start getting the rough shape of what I want it to look like. Um, there will be a, a bead on the top, a little ball, and to make that you start in the center and you just rotate your spindle gouge to the right and then to the left. And lifting at the same time with your back hand.
And I'm just cutting away a little bit at a time. And I still have to refine the top. I'm not done there yet. I just am trying to get some material away just so that I can work um, on the ball on the top. So you just want to get rid of that little point on the end and kind of round that over. That's good. And the tops you can do in a bunch of different ways. This isn't the 100% correct way. You can do this however you want. You can make it a flat top, a square top. Uh, you can do a top in a different material and then attach it later. Uh, this is just my style of what I like to do when I make my gnomes. Uh, so once I have the top kind of where I want it, I'll then determine how tall I want this total piece to be. And this again is just personal preference. This is just my point of view of how I like it. I don't measure anything out. And I always just eyeball it. And I, for me today, it just, it seems like it's gonna be somewhere in here. So I'll just make a little V groove there. And I'm not quite round yet either. So I have to cut, take that down a little. bars in the way. There you go. And when I'm holding my tool, I'm holding it kind of right by the ferrule with my forefinger on kind of the stem and then pushing downward pressure onto the tool rest. And then my body moving left and right is what's controlling the movement of the tool, not my arm going back and forth. And I'm not jabbing it into the material either. Just let the tool cut for itself. And putting my finger back here on this side, that's just a habit I've kind of developed over time making uh, finials or ornaments, just kind of supporting the work a little. Um, it's just comfortable for me to do that. It's not necessary. Uh, this is a big enough piece that I don't have to, but it's just comfortable for me. And then I like to try to get a little bit of an undercut onto the, the ball on the top, just so that it appears like it's a separate piece, even though it's the same material. There we go. I'm gonna just define my stopping point a little 
so that I can see the shape a little bit. Um, I have a ridge here that I'll want to get rid of. I don't think I'm actually round yet either at the top. That looks really cool. Um, yeah, I'm still flat here, so I have to take off a lot more material, which then will I'll take more here as well. Um, and when I make the hat, I like to have a little convex kind of a shape. Um, it, I like the way it flows a little bit better if it's if it has a nice soft curve going into the whole thing. And then once I get that shape done, then we'll bevel the bottom of it so it looks like the hat is sitting or resting, kind of being lifted off of the base of the gnome. So we'll just get this round here. It's good. good and then um, for the bottom of the hat um, I like to just make a little bit of a bevel here it just kind of allows the hat to look like it's resting on top of something resting on top of the body and kind of lift it off part it there I just want to check to see Oops. I got a l little bit of tool marks in here still that I need to remove and then I'm kind of happy with the hat already so So I think that looks pretty good for today. It looks kind of nice. Um, I'm just going to sand it with 220 just for the sake of time. And I mean, we all know how to sand stuff. So <laughs> I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on it. But just slowly leave the speed down so you're not burning your material or your paper. I know some people like to sand fast, but and that's fine as long as you're not burning uh, your paper onto your your piece that you just turned and worked so hard getting the shape. This top ball you can make any size that you want. It could be smaller, it could be bigger. Maple has a really fun characteristic. I don't know if you guys have done spindle turning with maple, but you can turn it and it kind of curls up on itself a little bit if you're cutting it a certain way. And I've done a hat where I've, I've kept that curl and I've had it kind of have this upward look and kind of, I don't know, like a top hat type of a piece up here. And that was, that was just an interesting, fun look. So, so just sand this down. Make sure to get that bevel too so that you don't lose that with your paper. And then I'm going to just
part it down a little bit more before putting a finish on it. And when I part these, I like to for make the first couple cuts very flat, and then I like to kind of convex um, and kind of go underneath the hat and have a, I think convex is the word I'm looking for. Um, and that allows room for the tenon, the glue, and then the beard to sit underneath the hat, so that there's just space. So first couple cuts are just going to be straight in with a re few relief cuts. And then just angle it a little bit. Okay. That's good there. Um, so for finishing, I have really started to enjoy Mahoney's oil as well as um, Dr. Kurt's Scratch Free and Finishing Wax. Um, I have kind of moved to just solely using these three products if I'm using my hands, just because I don't want to use anything toxic anymore. I don't want to have to wear gloves to put on a finish. I'd rather just use something that's non-toxic. And the best way to do these is just with a paper towel. Uh, when I was in Utah taking Matt Monaco's class, and Matt can attest to this too, uh, we did a lot of wet sanding with this, with this oil, and that leaves a really, really great finish too. And that's where you're just dipping the sandpaper in the in a bowl of the finish and then having another piece of paper towel behind it to catch all the, uh, the sawdust that comes off of the sanding. And it decreases the dust too. So when I was doing the 220, if I was wet sanding that, I would have saturated the sandpaper and put that on here with the paper towel and sanded them, sanded it together with this paper. Yeah, so I would have a bowl and I'd pour some of this inside of the bowl and then the sandpaper would be soaking wet with that and same with the paper towel and I'd put the sandpaper on here with this hand and then use the paper towel behind it to kind of catch all of the residue, the, so the sawdust that comes off. And you can start that with like 120 and then do all of the grits in that fashion. And what that does is it just opens the grain of the wood, allows the oil to penetrate deeper into the material and then kind of harden deeper in instead of just on the surface if you were to go to a 600 grit and then put the finish on. So that's good there. And then I will use the finishing wax. This has a little abrasive paste to it so it gets fine little scratches out. Uh, this stuff, uh, Dr. Kirk's Scratch Free. Put it here. Oh. I'll have it up there so you guys can see it. You can order it from Craft Supplies. Um, it's a, a product that Kurt Tahir makes. Oops, that's a lot. But you just saturate your product and then just uh, buff it off. Two of them I did. I didn't use the Mahoney's on them because I was out. I just had to pick that up today. But I did use the two uh, Dr. Kirk's on them, the ones that are not shiny. So, and the reason why I like this is that it just gives it a softer look. Um, I don't necessarily like to do a shine finish on these. I prefer to have um, more of a natural look on the gnomes that I make. The ones that are for ornaments, I will do the, like a lacquer spray or the glaze that I have here, 
just because I want light to reflect off of that. And if you haven't smelt this stuff, I'll have it up here for you guys. You should come up and smell it. It's really lemony. It smells really great. And this is good for your hands too. Kirk um, walks around with a smaller can of this in his pocket and puts it on his hands like a lotion. Okay, so now I'll part this off. And again, I want to keep um, kind of a convex shape underneath the hat just to allow room for everything to fit under here. There's a hat. There's just a little bit of a nub here, which we'll take off in a little bit. But I want to keep that on because that's marking the center spot, which later I'll be drilling a hole into to accept a, little, a tenon that I'm going to make on the body. So now that I'm done with this, I'll work on the body will be next. And what you want the body to be is you want it to be a little bit smaller than the hat. So you just take your calipers and you're just making a guess. There's no measurement. You're just kind of guessing on, on where you want it, setting, setting your own measurement on the size of the body that you want. So we're just going to go kind of there. Should I pass this around? I don't, yeah? Okay. I think it's spalted maple, but yeah. Yeah, Dr. Kirk. No Captain Kirk's here. So with the body, it's going to be kind of the same process as the head. Bring up the tailstock support, get the corners off, get, get it round, and then work on shape. And when I work on the body, this is the bottom of the gnome, and then the top of the gnome is over here. So the hat will be attached to this end. And the reason why I do that is that I can finish the bottom nice and smooth with my tools, and then I can create the tenon up here and part it off where the tenon is going to be. Any questions so far? Yes. I am left-handed. Yeah. Sometimes I switch to my right hand, but mostly, yeah, left-handed. Um, I don't know. I think probably around a thousand. I'll check. My lathe at home doesn't have a digital readout, so I just go as fast as what's comfortable. If your lathe is starting to bounce and move around, you're going way too fast. You need to slow it down. No, but. Yeah, it's at like 11, 1200 right now. And when you're roughing out a blank like this, you don't want to start in the middle and try to go left or right because you're just running into the end grain fibers and you're not making a nice cut. You always want to start on the end and work your way out towards this way. And again, you can use the bevel or you can turn the tool sideways and make some just planing cuts.
there we go. I'm around now. All right, so uh, the diameter that I marked before was the inside of the head of where I want the body to be. This is a little bit too small. <laughs> I think I grabbed a too small of a blank, but it should still be fine. The hat's just gonna be a little bit larger. If we would have started with this piece as the hat, we would have had to take off a lot more material off of that really beautiful spalted maple piece or made it uh, too small. Like, sometimes you can make them incorrectly where the hat and the body don't line up, where you have to find a whole new piece because the size doesn't match, doesn't line up, or you don't have a big enough piece for the hat for the body you made. So now I'm gonna just kind of take a guess of how tall I want this gnome to be, and we're just gonna go kind of right there. And I will clean up the bottom so some of this will go away. But he's gonna be somewhere around that tall. And then now I switch to my spindle gouge. You could continue to use your roughing gouge if you want to for this, because um, this is really just gonna be kind of a straight cut, cleaning up the bottom and then rounding over the edge on the bottom and then creating another bevel edge on the top here. And these bodies can be straight, uh, they can have curves in them, they can be fat, they can be short, they can be really tall and skinny. Again, this is all up to you and how you want to make your gnome and how you kind of want them to look. I've made a gnome that had a body of, and it was like a half inch tall and really wide and round and kind of fat. And he was just kind of funny looking. You know, I'm turning right handed. <laughs> switching all the time. So I want to turn that center mark out of here that I made with, with my tailstock. And I also want to make this uh, little convex here as well so that it sits really nicely. I think. We learned that today too in your class about, you know, the bottom of the cocktail smoker too was that same way. Just helps it sit flat. So round over the edges so it has a nice bottom to it. Have it straight. There we go. I think that's pretty good. Come back to this side and then we'll work on the tenon here. So before I go any further, I'm just going to sand this real quick and then put a finish on it so that when I uh, do the tenon, I, I can part it off.
think all the dust is like blowing back with the fan. What's up? I, I th couldn't tell you. I don't know. I, th it might be. Yeah. It's one of the, it's some nameless thing that I have in a pile of my stack that I don't know what it is. <sighs> yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so September 17th, 8 a.m. in the morning, I'm having a, a wood sale at my house. I have over 900 blanks of wood that I acquired from a gentleman in Minnesota that had 30 plus years of wood turning experience and he was selling his whole shop and downgrading and I ended up purchasing it. Uh, but it's, it's way more wood than I could ever turn in like two lifetimes. Um, so I'm having a sale on that day. I live in Centennial. Um, I think Robin sent out my email or my address, but if you are interested, I can always get you my address. You can come um, before that, but you'll just have to kind of dig through the boxes of wood that I have. But I have, I have a lot. I've got a lot of burls. I have a lot of um, exotic woods that I'm selling. Um, lots of different things. So uh, tools, a lathe, So if you're in need of something special or specific, I'm sure I have it. All right, so the last thing that I need to do on this piece is just make the tenon. Um, that will help, just help hold the body and the hat together. Um, and I recently learned this using a wrench. Um, when I did the virtual exchange um, with the AAW Women in Turning, I had to make about 27 different parts and pieces that all had to fit into another piece. Uh, so to make it simpler, um, I learned from Marie Anderson just to use a a wrench the size that you want your hole to be and use it as a gauge and I'm sure I'm it was like brand it was news to me I had no idea that this would work and it works great um, I'm not using it as a cutting tool I'm just simply using it as a gauge for my tenon and then it just creates the same size tenons every time um, I taught a ladies of the lathe class on gnomes in I think February or January um, my piece that I made is up here but I didn't know this trick then, so we were just making them and then sizing the tenon afterwards and then finding the appropriate drill bit. So this just kind of, I was shocked when I heard about this. I was like, no way, that's pretty cool. So um, it's not sharp on either side. It's not meant to cut. It is just meant to be a sizing gauge. And when I'm cutting the tenon down, uh, towards the body. Again, I'm angling my tool inward a little to allow room for the glue and the beard and everything to fit in here.
almost there. There we go. And I want a, a decent sized tenon on this. I can always sand it shorter, cut it shorter if it's too long. There we go. So there's the body. What's that? Uh, this one I think is six millimeter. And then on the ornaments, I like to do three millimeters so in that I don't I haven't been able to find a wrench that small so that I just kind of guess and then I use my calipers to just kind of size it I do yeah and I have that I have a box here um, that has oh sure um, these are all in millimeters and I purchased this because uh, I also do a lot of pen turning and a lot of the pen instructions are all in millimeters, so this just worked. It works for me. Okay, so now this one's done. Um, and when I make these, I usually make about like 20 or so at a time. Uh, so I'll kind of get in production mode and just keep making pieces. And so since I want them all to be different, if this isn't a chuck, I might make a nose out of it next. Or, t or use the rest of this for a top, or a hat, or do another body. Um, but I'll use the entire block up before taking it out and switching it for something else. So when I make them, I usually have a whole pile of noses, a pile of bodies, and a pile of hats. And then I start kind of piecing them together based on just my own personal preference and what it looks like. Now we're going to do the nose. Going really slow. I tend to use um, a planar material for the body and something more exciting for the top just because the body is covered by uh, by a beard um, this one like I said this piece it was just something I had it was the right size for this demo so that's why I grabbed it but I would probably only use this piece for a hat um, just because it's so pretty like you're not gonna see this once the beard is on here unless you pick it up and turn it around so maple works great for bodies. Aspen works great for bodies, especially if you do a, a larger one because it's a little bit lighter weight. Because the bigger scale that you do, the heavier they start to get. So if you do something bigger than 12 inches, you might want to hollow out the interior of the body just so that it's not so heavy. And when I do the nose, I only really like to turn what I need. I'll leave the rest of it square because I don't need to turn any of that away. Because I really only need about to like there, which this is even a lot. That's a really big nose. So I probably won't even go to there.
And the noses, again, they can be whatever size you want them to be. They can be small, they can be big, they can be round, they can be flat. Uh, it's what makes making gnomes fun and just different than the norm of how it has to be a certain, you know, diameter or certain wall thickness. There's no rules here at all. It's really how you feel and what you want your gnome to look like. And kind of the personality you want to give them. I, my six-year-old daughter loves loves it when I make these. Uh, she actually she helps me choose the beards for them, and then oftentimes she names them. But she's it's just fun. They're you know they're they're just really fun. She one day made an entire family out of them and played for like an hour. Um, Gary, um, the cookie jar was holding, because he was holding things, um, Biggie, Smalls, I mean, they're, they're random. I think she named one Princess once or something, and Mr. White, uh, they're all over the place, but, whoops. Them, you know, people have a connection to them when you're at a at a fair too, and they they sell pretty well. So if if you're you know in that market and do these, um, they they do pretty good. I price mine anywhere between like five and twenty dollars, depending on the size and the type of material. Oh, it's way too high, but they. <laughs> well, if it's a little ornament, I mean those that they take. The ornaments take me like 10 minutes tops to make. So 10 is a great number too. $12 is a really good number. But I think they're they're kind of like an impulse purchase cuz the way I see it too is the ornaments that I make, I use cutoffs. So I've already made like the awesome looking ebony pen or ornament and I have just a little piece of scrap that would normally probably get thrown away. So it doesn't really cost a lot except for, you know, my time and, but five is too cheap. So these are great practice for um, people that are not well versed in spindle turning because you're making a lot of beads and coves, especially on the nose. Um, I like my noses to be a little bit rounded on the front and then square on the back. And you can square them off with the parting tool, but you have to get that tenon on here as well. So you can just kind of practice right here on your coves. and just switch left from left hand to right hand too. I think that looks okay. Yeah. So this one, sometimes I don't sand these because um, I can just get a nice, a nice uh, burnish with the tool, and then I'll just put a little bit of finish on it. Um, but I mean, feel free if you want to sand, go for it. But for time's sake, as well today, I just I won't do that. So again, um, I'll use a six millimeter wrench here just to size my tenon and my parting tool. Trim there. 
And then this tendon, you want to make it rather long because it has to go through the thickness of the beard and then hold into the body of your gnome. So you just want to make sure you just have some, you have enough length in your tendon to be able to do that. And careful so you don't lose this as well. I've made really small ones and parted it off and I've dropped them in the shavings and there's no way to find them. Uh, so that's your gnome or your nose for your gnome. Uh, we can do eight o'clock. We have an hour. So I'll show you guys how to do um, the little ones with scrap and then we'll put them, we'll assemble. Um, but I have to change out my jaws on my chuck so is there any questions right now or comments anything yeah uh so i i when i i think the question was when i glue them to what together do i use a thin set oh a thin ca glue so no i started using uh ca glue when um, I started doing these, but what I found is that the glue actually goes through the batting, like the backing of the beard, and then muddles the beard together. So I stopped using CA glue. You definitely can use them. You just have to be a little careful. I find hot glue is just a little bit easier to work with. Um, the only time I use CA glue, and the reason why I have it is just for the ornaments, for the hook, the eye hook that goes in the top. I need more table room. This is just going to take a minute, so. This is another reason why I only do, like I make a bunch of them at one time so that I'm not constantly changing out jaws. Any other questions? I didn't see any other hands. Okay. What's that? Oh, the beard material. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, okay. Uh, so I get the beard material from Hobby Lobby. Um, Michael's and Joanne's also has it. The thing that I found with them is that the the length of the beard is actually a lot shorter, so you don't get uh, you don't get a long length of the beard. And then the hooks that I use for the ornaments are also from a craft you know a craft store like Hobby Lobby or Michael sells them. They're in the jewelry department. Uh, I have also used hooks from fishing, like fishing hooks. Um, when the barb is dull from fishing, you can just cut the, the eye hook off and it works great. Um, I think six or seven dollars. And you can use, I mean, I've had those for like two years. I've used, you don't use very much of them. Uh, so it's not not like you're buying it all the time. And then the ornament stand that I have over there, I made that as well. Uh, you can buy those too, I've bought them too. The hooks, uh, the swirly hooks that are, connect that are holding the gnomes on, those are from, I think Michael's or Hobby Lobby, one of the two. All right. So,
we're going to use this piece of material. I don't know what this is. It's a cutoff from a pen or something. Um, we'll do the hat in here on this one because it's long enough. And then what's great about this is the extra that's, that's in here, that can be used for a body for another gnome. So the process here is the exact same, it's just only on a smaller, tiny little scale. Put this on. Same, same three tools. Yep. I, um, I think this is ground to either a 35 or 40 degree, um, and I just use the same tool for, every, for all of it, depending on the size. So. You can use smaller ones if you want to for more detail, but I just use this size. Coco Bolo. It's really buttery feeling. Yeah. <sighs> So when you do the ornaments, you want to make sure that you're still having a little point down here because uh, we're going to use a little tiny drill bit to make the hole for the eye hook. And you can do that with your with your tail stock with your with this still in there and And since you're working on a smaller scale, you want really light little cuts. If you do too much, you're going to take away all the material. And if you're good with a skew, you could do this with a skew chisel. You could probably do it with a small, or maybe not this size of a one, but you could use a bowl gouge if that's what you like to use for spindle turning. Just going to mark where I want to part it off. And when I make these little ones, they always remind me of the little sorry pieces or trouble, you know, like the little game pieces. So if you need a bunch of those, this is good practice for you too, I guess. not round yet so it's going to be smaller So now, like I mentioned, we have to put drill a little hole in there. 
So I like to bring up the tail stock nice and slow just to get a little indent of where the drill is going to go. Because that just kind of it gives it just enough indentation that the drill bit isn't going to slide around. And then I have like the world's tiniest drill bits. I have this little set got on Amazon. It's just really little. I'll stick it. I don't know. See, it's from China. I mean, it doesn't have any, you know, anything legible on it. Um, and then I have this little drill that I use here. Um, the reason why I like this is cut, instead of using like a Jacob's chuck is that this drill bit is so small that a Jacob's chuck is just too large. And then this bit, I can use it off of the lathe as well because it's see if I can free spinning there we go free spinning in the back so I can put that up against my palm and then to be able to spin it with my hands and this is uh, can be found whoopsies I just lost it there we go these can be found in um, like any craft store that does jewelry making it's kind of a more of a jewelers tool but with the lathe running, you can do this off the lathe as well and use just a, you know, hand do it. Um, I find that it's just as easy to just do it here. And you don't want to push too hard because this drill bit is very tiny and you don't want to break it. There we go. And then this is good to come off the lathe this one I will part flat because uh, the bottom I do between centers so it doesn't have a tenon on it uh, so this one you want the flat part so that it actually has something to adhere to oops don't do that I think I just messed it up I did that's okay this is just the practice piece <sighs> what'd you say Four dollars, <laughs> yeah. It's part of the discount, discount corner stuff. Okay, so that one's done, and this is really, really little. So now, what's great is this entire piece here can now become a body. I, I mean, you can. I, I don't I like to have all three of my parts be different just so then they're all they're always going to be different from one another uh, but you certainly can I mean I, I'll do it with this one since I said you can we'll do it that way Well, I should have, before I put it on here and centered, I should have flattened out this end that I just parted off of because uh, it's going to go in here and so I can't touch that end now. So I'm not going to use that piece because I didn't do that, but I'll use something that's quite similar. So before taking it out of your long nose jaws or whatever you're using, uh, flatten the surface off, make it straight. Um, on um, the one end because you won't be able to access that point and this point will be the top of the body so it'll go up here like so So this piece I usually just use my spindle gouge for the whole thing because it's so small. You don't need a roughing gouge for this, it's, that's just too much. And 
And this is going to be a really, really tall body. You can use a lot smaller pieces, half of this even. When I make these, I prefer to round the bottom and kind of taper the bottom off so that when it's hanging from a tree or an ornament stand, it's hidden behind the beard and it doesn't take away from the overall look of the gnome. And again, you want to taper the top as well. Make sure it has a little bit of a bevel, just like on the larger pieces, just so that the hat appears to be sitting on top. And just be careful for your, your uh, live center here too, so you don't hit it. This is a real tiny, like, tiny one. Really long though. And that's probably good too for a body. You can make it whatever shape you want, round it more, curve it more. Uh, there you go. Give it a longer curve here. That's probably good. And then I'm not going to sand this. I'll finish this up at home. You guys have already seen me sand stuff, so you don't need to see it again. But you could just take that one off, and then it's ready. This one might be a little bit, the hat is probably a little too small for this body because of the scale. The scale just isn't quite there, so I'd probably just save these two pieces for um, another one. Um, and then the nose is the same process. Uh, that we did just on a, a smaller little scale here. And there we go. That didn't need that. Um, no, no tenon on that one. Um, because of the size, you'd have to make a really small tenon. And then to drill that into here, you risk coming up through the side of the hat. So this, I just glue the entire thing on without a tenon. So I'll just do a really little nose quick and then um, we'll assemble everything together so you guys can see that process. Okay, perfect. Don't do that either. <laughs> 
So these you get really, really little because again, the body is so small um, that they're they're just tiny. Little noses, and then this all I kind of estimate this to be a close to three millimeters. You know, I, re I really don't know. Um, let's see. But not, I don't think it matters today. But I'll, I'll make the 10 in here and then I'll measure it to see what size it is. Then I know what drill bit I need. Sand it before parting it off the lathe. Part it off and you have an itty bitty little nose. Um, so we're done turning. Uh, the rest of it is assembly. So when I do the um, the ornaments as well as some of the bigger gnomes that I want to do a spray on, I created this little block over here that I can use as a spraying block. So I have a tiny rod that will fit the size drill bit that I did for my hat and stick that in there. I'll be able to spray it and then just stick it in one of these holes to dry. The noses, this is six millimeters. I have a six millimeter hole. I can just pop it in there. Same thing with the really little one. Um, so I just kind of made this so that I'm able to just dry things easily. I do the same thing when I make finial ornaments. Um, I'll have a rod that's the same diameter as the drill that I do and just stick all my ornaments in upside down and then spray them. And then I'm easy to, I'm able to spin the whole board around to be able to get all the sides. And then it dries nicely as well. But I'm not going to spray this in here today. Um, I just wanted to show you guys, but I have some that are already done that we can assemble. So these three and then my hat. And nose. All right, so on the first piece on the hat, we have this little nub here. Uh, I just take a little chisel and just chisel that away so that it's gone. And then we need a six milliliter drill bit. Uh, you can do this on a drill press if you want to, I guess, too, but this is just as easy. Uh, you'll want to find your center mark as best as you can. Sometimes this works out, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, your hat's just off a little bit and it just creates a whole new look or you can um, cut off your tenon or sand it down and just glue the two pieces together. But having the tenon here just helps with holding the whole piece together. And just it, it just adds a little extra uh, strength. So just make sure you're drilling in straight. And then just drill in a little bit and then check your fit. Yeah, my hat is really big today, so I'd probably switch these up, but it's a little big. It's, he's just got an oversized brim hat, which is fine. Um, the next thing that I do is, is fit the nose. So depending on the size of the nose, and you can see I've got all different sizes on mine, um, you wanna just be careful where you have the nose so that you're not hitting it, hitting the hat with the nose, and so that it will actually sink all the way to into the body. If you have the nose too low, then there's so much beard that has to sit on top of the nose, you gotta make eyebrows, which is fine. You can make eyebrows, I've done it before, but it's just, it's another level that you need to do. The other thing that you wanna look at is the grain pattern on your body and what do you want to have covered. So say there's a, uh, I don't know, maybe you got a little catch on the end and you wanna cover that up or there's just a, a piece of the material that you just don't like the look of, you can hide it with the beard. So here I would, I'm just going to put it right in the middle here so that this area and this area are on the sides and the nose is kind of in the middle. So kind of right about there. And since there's a little bit of a point here, sometimes that helps to create a mark in the wood, a tiny, tiny little mark that sometimes you just can't see that you think you did it, but you didn't. And then just drill. Okay. 
Not deep enough. Too big diameter. Is that, and that's just my personal preference. Um, a lot of these other ones are a lot smaller diameter so that there's not as much overhang. Um, but again, you can make them however you want. This is just my personal preference and what I think looks good to my eye. All right. Yeah, that fits. So this is what he's going to look like before you get the beard on there. And then that's the best part. So like I said before, my daughter helps me pick these out um, most of the time. But also the way that I do it is just kind of coordinating the color of the beard with the grain that's in the hat and the grain that's in the body and just making my best guess on what I feel looks good. There's no right or wrong answer here. I, I think I might go with this just because I feel like the black in this beard is going to pull out the black spalting in, in here. And so when you're measuring out your beard, I want to make sure I'm in the camera so you guys can see. I like to go just the first third around the body. If you go halfway around, that's too far. That's too much beard. So just kind of the first third. And I'll lay my, my material out to where I want it to, to fit and put a little bit of a cut there. Okay. And then I'll flip it around and use any tool for this. It can be an awl or uh, one of these, a screwdriver. But what you're doing here is you're just parting the fur, parting the hair so that you can cut it. Because you want to keep the length of the beard as much as possible. If you don't do this, you'll cut the length and then you'll just have a shorter side of a beard and you'll have to kind of trim them up. So just part that and cut straight down. Now for the length, you don't want it to be too long because if it sits too long, your gnome isn't going to actually sit on the table. It's going to be lifted and elevated. So you just want to go a little bit below and a little bit above. So I'm going to go somewhere right around in here. So again, part your hair, part the fur, and then make another cut. All right, so we're done with that. So now we have to make room for the nose to fit. So the best way to do that is to fold your beard in half and then cut a slit here, just right in the top in the middle. I don't part this. I've, I've, I've found that I don't need to um, because the hairs get covered up by the nose. And then you want to do a test as well. So put it ar around, put it in, and I'm too short. Like I need to cut that slit a little bit more. It's hard to see, sorry. Um, but I want the beard to kind of come up and go over the edge of the body and cover all of the wood on the top. So I need to make that slit just a little bit deeper. Um, it's, it, as it, faux fur, faux fur, it's sold like this and then a label is clamped onto the top. Um, and it's backed by, I think like the, I, I think like the, the felt by the piece, um, not by, not by the fabric, it's by like arts and crafts. I've got a lot of status in here. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is just, because this is the very top of the, the material, it's got extra batting up here. And so I'm going to cut that off before attaching it to the gnome, just so that you don't see that. That's just, it's going to be there. It's just manufactured that way. Just trim it up. Uh, give it another test. Put the nose in, in the beard. And then check the fit, which I think I'm okay. Um, so here is where I like to use a hot glue gun versus a CA glue, a thin or a medium or a thick, because the glue goes through the back of the CA glue does, and then it gets all over the front side of the beard, all over your fingers, and then you just can't work anymore because your fingers are sticking to the beard. Ask me how I know that. 
Yeah. And then it's all over the place. And right now the fan is blowing all the fur all over. Um, but if you're in your if you're in your house doing this, put a lot put some paper towel down where you're working. That kind of helps keep the the small little pieces from blowing all over your house. Okay. Uh, so since I have a finish on this, I have to rough up my my piece before I can attach the glue. Otherwise, it won't adhere. So I just give it just a light sand around where the nose is, along the top, the bottom, and the side of it where I'm going to put the glue, just so that the surface is a little bit rough again, so that the glue, the glue will adhere to that. And I'm just going to work in small, uh, small bits and areas at one time. And my glue gun is a low temp glue gun. I think it's like a $10 one I've had for years. Um, I like a low temp one because I can put my finger on it and I'm not going to burn myself like the high temps. And it still has enough working time that I can push the nose in to the hole, squeeze the beard up and around, and then push it down flat. So it's kind of like a multiple thing. I did. So I put glue inside of the hole where the tenon goes. Okay, and then it still is loose on the sides, so I have to continue working around. Sanding a little bit, and then putting some glue on. And I'm not gluing the entire beard to the body. I'm only gluing it towards the top. Oops. I need that in there. It's not a lot. No, and because it's hot glue, you can squish it too. And because it's low temp, I can also squish it. I'm not burning my fingers. If you're using a high temp glue gun, because that's what you have, just be very careful that you're not harming yourself. So do this other side. Nope, nope. Just the same stuff. And you can get, um, this stuff is just, this is a multi temp. Um, you can get, I think Gorilla Glue sells like a super strong strength glue as well uh, that you can also get. Just You just need to make sure you're getting the right size diameter for your glue gun. Um, so next, what I need to, so the beard is attached to the body. The next thing I need to do is trim up the bottom because as he sits now, he doesn't sit very flat. It's a little bit too long and I also want to shape it. I prefer my the beards on my gnomes to be either rounded or in a triangle shape. So I'll actually flip them upside down. And sometimes when you can, sometimes you will get that one side is higher than the other side and it's very, it's not straight. And that's just because of how much you pulled up high on one side versus the other when you glued it on the nose. And that's totally fine because you're gonna give them a little haircut and bring them into the barbershop right now. So uh, this is when you need to be very diligent about brushing the hair back, the fur on the beard, so that you're not cutting the length off. Um, if you want to get a little comb, I'm sure that would be fine. You can do that. I just use my hands here. And then what I want to do is just round over these corners so that there's a little point and in that it's a triangle, a tr more of a triangle shape. And then you just want to check to make sure you're, you're square and straight. And I'm kind of off a little bit. I found that doing this on the body is much easier than doing it, or it's better. It's not easier, but uh, it works a lot better than if you were to cut it before attaching it and cutting it in a triangle on here. Just because you may not put it on perfectly straight and then this just allows you to cut it. You're gonna have to cut it anyways to get the shape right. And again, this shape is my, my preference. It doesn't have to be what you do um, or what you like. It is just my preference. <laughs> it's so bad, it gets everywhere. 
Uh, sometimes you can even do a little bit of a trim on the sides here just to kind of cut away that extra matting of the, the backing of the fur. Um, but right here I'm happy with it. It's, it's a nice triangle shape, which is what I like. It'll sit flat on a table. If it doesn't sit flat and you want the length of it, uh, what you can do, there's a trick you can do is if it's really long, you can cut it, cut a slit here, and then cut a slit on the other side, and that allows it just to kind of sit flat. So if you have a piece of fur that is, is a thicker material and your gnome doesn't want to lay flat, that's a way around it instead of cutting it really short so you can still keep the length. So I'm happy with this. The next thing I'm going to do is attach the hat. And because I chose a material that has a lot of figure in it and a lot of detail, I really want to focus on what that looks like on the gnome. So I generally, rule of thumb, I kind of put the, the figurine not directly above the nose, but kind of off to the side, especially if it's a grain material kind of like this. It, what it creates, in, in my mind, in my eyes, what it, what it creates is it just creates a flow of this of the lines and the grain so that your eye kind of moves up the form so it's just looking at it in a little bit more artistic way um, if you have something like like this one that doesn't have a lot of that but just has some neat you know some nice spalting and things in here you know you can put that right front in the center um, so I think I'll actually probably do this here because I like the way I'll try to do it this way so you guys can see I like the way that this brown piece is kind of forming up this way and the, it's creating movement this direction. So when I glue this, here's where you can use a CA glue. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I just use a hot glue gun because that's what I have out. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put glue on the inside and then around the outside. And with hot glue, it creates strings. So you want to pull your glue away at the back side of the hat. The reason for this is because you're going to have a string coming out. You don't want that string falling on the front side of the beard because it'll get stuck in there and then it's a little bit harder to get out. So that's just a... So I just I hold it with your thumb where the front is, put glue inside of there, around the outside. And then pull away towards the back where that so that that string can sit towards the back and then just press and hold it together this guy actually looks kind of cute with the big hat so I'm actually okay with it this size I haven't you probably can um, the, my only concern would just be the weight of it on a tree and if it would hold on the branch so there's a gnome um, for an ornament, the process is the exact same. I use a little bit more CA, I use CA glue more often here because I have the hat, I have a little tiny hole in here that needs to accept a eye hook. So I buy these silver eye hooks. I also have some black threaded ones, but I just don't care for those too much. These work just fine for me. They're just a black. Uh, silver eye hook it's a long stem so you have to cut it so you just use a little jewelry wire cutting tool to the length that you want sometimes I'll put this I'll measure what I need by just putting one end into the pre-drilled hole just to see what's the what is the length and then just kind of eyeball that on the other side just replicate it Okay, so I have that cut. This is a tiny little piece, so I'll hold it in my pliers. Okay, and then I'll put glue directly onto this piece. And this is a, a medium. You, whoop, I dripped. You can use a thick here as well. And then put that in there, ensure it's straight and kind of square. And then a little accelerator. And that's hooked on there. I've got strings all over the place. I don't know if you guys can tell. You can see it. 
it's all over. This is not a clean project. Uh, again, I have a little point here so that I have to take off. So just very carefully chisel this off. You can use sandpaper if you want. Um, just don't put it up against like a, don't put it down like this because remember you made this kind of concave and you have a nice bevel on there. So you want to try to keep those. And I'm sure there's a better way to do this too. If anyone knows of it, feel free to share. You could use a Dremel, yeah. With like a sanding bit on in the end of it or? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, that's good. So the process here for the beard is the same that we did on the larger guy. So I already drilled this hole as well for the nose. I did that before I came. Um, same thing, that this is going to just go right in there. It's not quite deep enough, so I'm going to shave it off. Um, and anyone want to pick the color we do? White? Okay. White or, or blonde? I don't know who said white. This one? Okay. They do. We do. <laughs> um, yeah, the white looks great. I mean, it gets a really long effect. So same, pr same process, measure, make a little slit of, of where it's going to be, how wide. Got to move these things out of the way or I'm going to lose them. The ornaments, I tend to do them a lot longer, the beards, I should say, because uh, they are going to hang off of something. They're not sitting on a table, but if you were to take this off of here, it, it won't sit because of the length of the beard. It's just going to fall right over. So. Cut this. I'm just going to start by flattening this out. I think I cut something else above it and it just wasn't very straight. So straighten that out. Fold it in half. You're cutting just the, the little V for the nose to fit in. Okay. I'm going to cut it just a little bit further down. Um, I've made uh, some of these gnomes on the top hat. I've put fur up there and it's kind of like a little pom-pom hat. Makes it kind of fun and unique. Um, like I've said, I've, I've put eyebrows on them before out of the extra material. I've saved all that stuff. So you can get pretty creative with these. I've seen some people uh, make top hats for them, which is fun. I haven't done that before. Um, I think next I want to make like little hands that come out the side and then holding like a staff or make a little Viking gnome or something. All right. So then uh, same process, little glue. This is. All right little glue inside there and then just around the top Oops. 
And you kind of have to do two things at one time here. You have to put the nose in and hold it and push it down as well as pushing the beard together at the top and folding it over. So three things at once. And then glue the rest of it down. And you want to make sure that you're getting, when you're folding it over the top, you're flattening it as much as possible because the hat is going straight onto this, onto the flat here. Okay, and then again, turn them over. Barbershop time, give them a little trim. This is the most challenging part for me, I think, is just like the management of the fur and just making sure it is laying the right way so that you're not cutting it all off. And you can do that too. I mean, if you want to experiment and cut it short and have a short beard, you can definitely do that. I think it might look, it could look kind of cool, I guess. Five o'clock shadow, yeah. And you're gonna get a lot of extra coming out of here. Oh, oh, he's a little crazy. Okay. So on this one, I don't know if you guys can see in the camera, but I cut the slit a little bit too far. Um, so that's the kind of the look that you'll get if you do it a little bit too far. It just won't cover it up. So I could take a little piece of something else and kind of attach it directly underneath there to kind of cover up my little little happy mistake, happy accident. Anyone likes Bob Ross. He says that all the time. So the, um, I'm just going to cut this real quick and stick it right in that spot to kind of hide a reverse skunk, yeah. And what I'm doing, uh, it's probably hard to see from where you guys are at, what I'm doing is that I'm just cutting a little bit of the batting away so that it's just a little bit smaller. Okay, let's see how I can do this. And this is going to be tricky because of those strings that you get. <laughs> Nose hair. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that was great. All right. The top is next. So you can put the glue on the base or on the hat either way. And then just line, you know, I like to just have this center hole center above the hat or center above the nose. And then just, you know, squeeze them tight on there so that it stays. And then you have an ornament as well. Yeah, that's what I have for you guys. Thanks. And they're ready to go. And you can use these, most of the time I just like to use monofilament um, on these, just a clear, semi-transparent fishing line. So, yeah, any questions? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know, what do you want to learn? <laughs> thank you.
Get rid of your scraps. This is the best way to do that. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you.